Yes, we are live. So, what is going on, Hamza? It's great to have you here for this edition of the Vector Space Talks. Let's first start with this. Everybody that is here with us right now, great to have you. Let us know where you're dialing in from in the chat. And feel free over the course of the next 20, 25 minutes to ask any questions as they come up in the chat. I'll be monitoring it and maybe jumping in in case we need to stop hunts at any moment. And if you or anybody you know would like to come and give a presentation on our Vector Space Talks, we are very open to that. Reach out to me either on Discord or LinkedIn or your preferred method of <laughs> communication. Maybe it's Carrier Pigeon, whatever it may be. I am here and ready to hear your pitch about what you want to talk about. It's always cool hearing about how people are building with Quadrant or what they are building in this space. So without further ado, let's jump into this with my man Hamza. Great to have you here, dude. Thank you for having me. It's, it's an honor and a pleasure. Oof. You, you say that now. Just wait. You don't know me that well, I guess. That's the <laughs> only thing. So let's just say this. You're doing some incredible stuff. You're the founder of Traversal AI. You have been building large language models in the past, and you're also a professor at UCLA. You're doing all kinds of stuff, and that is why I think it is my honor to have you here with us today. I know you've got all kinds of fun stuff that you want to get into, and it's really about building LLM-powered applications in production. You have some slides for us, I believe, so I'm going to kick it over to you, let you start rocking, and in case anything comes up, I'll jump in and stop you from going too far down the road. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for that. I really like your joke of the carrier pigeon. Uh, is there, <laughs> uh, is it a Jenny A carrier pigeon with yeah. multiple <laughs> LLMs and H100s attached to it? Exactly. Those are the expensive carrier pigeons. That's the premium version. I am not quite that uh, GPU rich yet. Absolutely. All right. Um, <clears throat> I think that that's a great segue. Uh, I usually tell people, um, that I'm going to teach you all how to be a GPU poor AI guy person. And oh. I basic, my job is to basically teach everyone or the thesis of my organization is also how can we build powerful solutions, LLM powered solutions by using open source products and open source LLMs and architectures so that we can stretch the dollar as much as possible. That's been my thesis and I've always pushed for open source because they've done some great job over there and they are coming in close, um, you know, to, to pretty much at par of what the industry standard is. But I digress. Let's start with um, my overall pre presentation. I'm here to talk about the future of search and co-pilots and just the overall experience with which we are looking with the uh, with LLMs. So um, I know you gave a background about me. You know, I am a founder at Traversal AI. Previously, I was at uh, Google and uh, Walmart Labs. Um, I have quite a few years of experience in machine learning. In fact, my first job in 2007 was working for SAS. And uh, I was implementing uh, trees for for identifying fraud, uh, for fraud detection. And I, I did not know that was, uh, honestly, data science but we were implementing that. I have had the experience of teaching at multiple universities and that sort of experience has really helped me do better at what I do. In, because when you can teach something, you actually truly understand that. All right, so why are we here? Why are we really here? Um, I'll start with, I have a very strong mean game. So um, we started uh, almost a year ago, uh, ChatGPT came into our lives and almost all of a sudden we started using it. Um, and I think in February, January, February, March, it was just an explosion of usage. And, and now we know all the different things that have been going on. Um, and we've been, we've seen proliferation of a lot of startups that have come in this space. Some of them are rappers. Some of them have done a lot more, have a lot more moat. And 
there are many, many different ways that we have been using it. I don't think we are, we even know how many ways we can use ChatGPT, but most often it's just been text generation, one form or the other. And that is what the focus has been. But if we look deeper, it can also, the LLMs that we know, they also can help us with a very important part, something which is called complex search. And complex search is basically when we converse with, with the search system to actually give a much longer query of how we would talk to a human being. And that is something that has been missing for the longest time in our interfacing uh, with any kind of search engine. Uh, Google has always been at the forefront of giving, in the, uh, giving the best form of search for us all. But imagine if you were to look at um, any other e-commerce websites other than Amazon. Um, imagine you go to Nike.com, you go to Gap.com, you go to Banana Republic. Um, what you see is that their search is really, really basic. And this is, this is an opportunity for a lot of companies to actually create a great search experience for the users with a multi-tier engagement model. So you basically make a request, I would like to buy a Nike blue t-shirt, specially designed for golf, but, you know, with all these features which I need, and at a reasonable price point, it shows you a set of results, and then from that, you can actually converse more to it and say, hey, can you remove five or six or re reduce this by, by a certain degree? That is the power of what we have at hand with complex search. And complex search is becoming quickly a great segue to why we need to implement conversation search. In the, uh, uh, we would need to implement large language models in our ecosystem so that we can understand the context of what our users have been asking. So I'll, I'll show you a great example of sort of a you know, complex search that TripAdvisor has been. Um, last week in one of my uh, uh, classes at Stanford, we had a head of AI from TripAdvisor come in and he took us through um, an experience of a new way of planning your trips. So, I'll share this example. So if you go to uh, if you go to the website, you can use AI, and you can actually select a city. So let's say I'm going to select London, for that matter. And I can say I'm going to go for a few days. I do next, and I'm going to go with my partner. Now at the back end, this is just building up a version of complex search. And I want to do, um, I want to see attractions, great food, hidden gems. I basically just want to see almost everything. And then when I hit submit, the great thing what it does is that it sort of becomes a starting point for something that would have taken me quite a while to put it together. It sort of uh, takes all my information and generates an itinerary. Now, See what's different about this. It has actual data about places where I can stay, things I can do, uh, literally day by day. And it's there for you, free of cost, generated within 10 seconds. This is an experience that did not exist before. You would have to build this by yourself. And what you would usually do is you would go to ChatGPT. Uh, you know, if you've started this year, you would say seven day itinerary to, to London and it would identify a few things over here. However, you see, it has able to integrate the ability to book, the ability to actually see those uh, restaurants all in one place. That is something that has not been done before. And this is the truest form of taking complex search and putting that into production and sort of create a great experience for the users so that they can um, understand what's, uh, what they can select, they can highlight and sort of interact with it. Going to, going to pause here, uh, is there any question or um, I can help answer anything? No, man, this is awesome though. I didn't even realize that this is already live, but yeah. it's 100% what a travel agent would be doing. And right. now you've got that at your fingertips. So they have built a user experience which takes 10 seconds to build. 
Now, what is it? Was it really happening in the back end? You have this macro task that I want to plan a vacation in Paris. I want to plan a vacation uh, to London. And what web agents or auto agents or whatever you want to call them, they are recursively breaking down task into subtask. And when you reach to an individual atomic subtask, it is able to divide it into actions which can be taken. So there's a task decomposition and a task recognition scene that, that is going on. And from that, come, um, for instance, TripAdvisor is able to build something um, of individual actions, and then it makes one interface for you where you can see everything um, ready to go. And that's the part that I have always been very interested in. Whenever we go to Amazon or anything for search, we just do one one tier search we basically say i want to buy a jeans i want to buy a shirt i want to buy it's an atomic thing do you want to get a flight do you want to get an accommodation imagine if you could do i would like to go to tokyo or i would what kind of gear do i need excuse me what kind of overall grade do i need to go uh to a glacier and it can identify all the different subtasks that are involved in it and then eventually show you the action. And, well, it's all good that it exists, but the biggest thing is that it's actually difficult to build complex search. Um, Google can, can get away with it, Amazon can get away with it, but if you imagine, how do we make sure that it's available to the larger masses? It's available to just about any company for that matter, if they want to build that experience. At this point, uh, this is again from a uh, uh, this is uh, from a talk that was given by Microsoft uh, a couple of months ago. Uh, there are 10 billion search queries a day. Estimated half of them go unanswered because people are not don't actually use search as what we used to because we again also because of GPT coming in and the way we have been con conversing with our with our products, we are search is getting more coherent as we would expect it to be as a with we would talk to a person and it it's great for finding a website for more complex ta questions or tasks it often falls too short because we are a lot of company 99.99 percent companies i think they are just stuck on uh elastic search because it's cheaper to run it it's easier it's out of the box and a lot of companies do not want to spend the money or they don't have the people to help them build that as a product, as an SDK that is available and they can implement it and, and, and starts working for them. And the biggest thing is that there are complex search is not just one query, it's multiple queries, sessions or deep, which requires deep engagement with search. And what I mean by deep engagement is imagine when you go to Google right now, you put in a search, you can give feedback on your search, but there's nothing that you can do that it can, unless you start a new search all over again. You, in perplexity, you can ask follow-up questions, but it's also a bit of a broken uh, experience because you can't really reduce as you would do with Jarvis in, in Iron Man. So imagine there's a, there's a human aspect to it, and let me show you another example um, of a, Copilot system. That's it. So this is an example of a copilot which which we have been working on. There is a question. Okay. There's actually two really good questions that came yeah. through. So I'm going to stop you before you get into this cool copilot. Uh, Carlos was asking, what about downtime when it comes to these LLM services? I think the downtime. <laughs> This is the perfect question. If if you have a production level system running on chat GPT, you're going to learn within five days that you can't run a production system on chat GPT and you need to host it by yourself. And then you start you start with hugging face and then you realize hugging face can also go down. So you basically go to bedrock or you go to Amazon, you go to an AWS or GCP and host your uh, host your LLM over there. So essentially it's all fun with demos to show, oh my God, it works beautifully. But consistently, you if you have an SLA that 99.9% .9 uptime, you need to deploy it in, uh, in an architecture with redundancies 
so that it's up and running. And the eventual solution is to have dedicated support to it. It could be through Azure OpenAI, I think. But I think even yeah. Azure OpenAI tends to go down uh, with uh, yeah. OpenAI's uh, out of, you know. It's a little bit better, but it's not 100%. Yeah. That is it, for sure. Can I just give you an example? Uh, recently, we came across a new thing. The token speed also varies with the day and with the uh -huh. with the time of the day. So the token generation. And another thing that we found out that Instruct, GPT Instruct was great, amazing, but it's leaking the data. The data. Even in a rack solution, it's that. leaking the data. So you have to go back to 3.5, 16K, uh -huh. and then 16K has is up, like it's really, really slow. So to generate uh -huh. an answer can take up to three minutes. Uh -huh. Yeah, so it's almost this catch-22. What do you prefer, leaked data or slow speeds? Very There's slow. always trade-offs, folks. There's always trade-offs. So uh, Mike has another question coming through in the chat. And uh, Carlos, thanks for that awesome question. Mike is asking, though, I presume you could modify the search slash itinerary with something like, I prefer Italian restaurants when possible. And I was thinking about that when it comes to, uh, so to add on to what Mike is saying, it's almost like every single piece of your travel or your itinerary would be prefaced with, oh, I like my flights at night, or I like to sit in the aisle row, and I don't want to pay over X amount, uh, but I'm cool if we go anytime in December, et cetera, et cetera. And then once you get there, I like to go and to hotels that are around this part of this city. I think you get what I'm I'm going at, but the preference list you for each of these can just like get really, really detailed and you can preference all of these different searches with what you were talking about. Absolutely. So I think that's that's a great point. And I will tell you about a company that we have been closely working with. It's called Trips uh, Tripsby or Tripsby.ai. And we actually help help build them the ecosystem where you can have personalized recommendations, surprise discovery. It's pretty much everything that you just said. I prefer at this time. I prefer this. I prefer this. And it sort of takes audio and text, and you can converse it through WhatsApp. You can converse it through different ways. Uh, they are still in the in the in the beta mode, and you know uh, they go selectively, but. Literally, they have built this. They have taken a lot more personalization into play. And because the database is all the same, it's Amadeus yeah. who gives out the, you know, um, I'm pronouncing correct. They give out the, the, the database for hotels or restaurants or availability, and then you can build things on top of it. So they have gone ahead and built something, but with more user expectation. Imagine you're trying to book a hotel and you also get an article from New York Times. That says this is why this is a great or a blogger that you follow and it sort of shows up in your that is the strength that we have been powering that you don't need to wait or you know you, you don't need to depend anymore on just the um just the web company's website itself you can use the entire internet to come up with an answer now. yeah and your ability i think another example of this would be how I love to watch TikTok videos and some of the stuff that pops up on my TikTok feed is like Amazon finds you need to know about. And it's talking about different cool things you can buy on Amazon. If Amazon knew that I was liking that on TikTok, it would probably show it to me next time I'm on Amazon. Yeah, I mean, that's what cookies are, right? Yeah, um, yeah, it's yeah almost, totally. It's, it's, a con it's a conspiracy theory that you, you, you're you talking about a product <laughs> and it shows up on Instagram. Yeah, exactly. Well, so, okay, this website that you're showing is absolutely incredible. Uh, Carlos had a follow-up question before we jump into the next piece, which is around um, the quality of these open source models and how you deal with that. Because it does seem that OpenAI, is, the GPT-3, 4 is still quite a bit ahead. These yes, days. and that is a cat. That is the biggest. That's the silver bullet you have to buy. Yeah. So what we Trade suggest ups. is have LLMs, open LLMs as a backup. So at a yeah, at a okay. point in time, uh, I know it will be subpar, but something subpar might be a little better than breakdown of your complete system. Yeah. 
and yes. that's what we have been employed we have been uh, we have deployed um what we've done is that when we're building large scale products we basically tend to put an ecosystem behind uh, or uh, you know a backup behind which is like if something is if the token rate is not what we want if the if it's not working it's taking too long we automatically switch to a redundant version uh which is open source it does perform like for instance even right now perplexity is running a lot of things on open source llms now yeah. instead of just gpt wrappers yeah gives you more control so i didn't want to derail this too much more i know we're kind of running low on time so feel free to jump back into it and talk fast <laughs> yeah so uh how, can you give me a time check how are we doing yeah we that? got about uh six to eight minutes left okay so i'll cover one important thing of why i built my company traversal.ai um this is a great slide to see everyone what everyone is doing everywhere everyone is doing so many different things they're looking into different product for each different thing you can pick one thing imagine the 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 concern with this is that you actually have to think about every single product that you have to pick up because you have to meticulously go through oh for this i need this for this i need this for this i need this all what we have done is that we have created one platform which has everything under one roof and i'll show you with a very simple example this is our website uh we call ourselves one platform with multiple app applications and in this what we have is we have any kind of data format pretty much that you have any kind of integrations which you need for example any applications and i'll zoom in a little bit and you, if you want, if you need domain specific search, so basically, if you're looking for internet search to come in, any kind of LLMs that are in the market and uh, vector databases, you see quadrant right here. And what kind of applications that are needed? Do you need a chatbot? You need a knowledge retrieval system? You need recommendation system? You need something which is a job matching tool or a code copilot? So if you've built a one-stop shop, where a lot of times when a customer comes in, uh, they are like, they usually they don't come to us and say, we need a pine cone or we need a quadrant or we need a local armor. They say, this is the problem you're trying to solve. And we are coming from a problem solving initiative from our company is that we got this. You don't have to hire three ML engineers and two NLP research scientists and three people from here. For the cost of two people, we can do an entire end-to-end -end implementation because what we have is 80% product which is built and we can tune, uh, tune the 20% to what you what you need. And that is such a powerful thing that uh, once they start trusting us and the best way to have them trust me is they can come to my class on Maven, they can come to my class on Stan in Stanford, they come to my class on UCA, in UCLA, or they can listen to this podcast. And sort of it adds credibility to what we have been doing with them. Um, sorry, stop sharing. Uh, what, what we have been doing with them, it sort of just goes in that direction that we can do these things pretty fast um, and we tend to update. I want to just cover one slide yeah. um, at the end of the day. There. Yeah, yeah. This is the main slide. Just, be, you know, right now, all engineers and product managers are thinking, oh, LLMs and Gen AI and this and that. I think one thing we don't talk about is UX experience. I just showed you a UX experience on TripAdvisor. It's so easy to explain, right? Like you're like, oh, I know how to use it. And you can already find problems with it, which means that they've done a great job thinking about a user experience. Yeah. I predict one main thing. UX people are going to be more rare who can work on Gen AI products than product managers and tech people. What? Because for tech people, they 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 can follow and understand code, and they can watch videos. Business people, you know, they're learning GPT prompting and so on and so forth. But the UX people, there's literally no no teaching guide except for a chat GPT interface. Yeah. So this user experience, they are going to be, you know, the world the the world their worth is going to be in equal in gold, not Bitcoin, but gold. It's <laughs> it's basically because. They have done such a, they will have to build user experiences because we can't imagine right now what it will look like. Yeah, I 100% agree with that. Actually, I uh, imagine you 
have seen some of the work from Linus Lee from Notion and yep. how Notion is trying to add in the clicks instead of having to always chat with the LLM. You can just point and click and give it things that you want to do. I noticed with the demo that you shared, it was very much that, like you're highlighting things that you like to do and you're narrowing that search yep. and you're giving it more context without having to type in, I like Italian food yes. and I don't yes. like meatballs or whatever it may be. Yes. So that's incredible. This is perfect, man. And so for anyone that wants to continue the conversation with you, you are on LinkedIn. We will leave a link to your LinkedIn. And you're also teaching on Maven. You're teaching in Stanford, UCLA, all this fun stuff. It's been great having you here. I'm very excited. And I hope to have you back because it's amazing seeing what you're building and how you're building it. Awesome. I think, it, 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 again, it's a pleasure and an honor. And thank you for letting me speak about the UX part a lot because I've been... You know, when you go to your customers, you realize that you need the UX and all those different things. Oh, yeah. It's so true. It is so true. Well, everyone that is out there watching us, thank you for joining. And we will see you next time. Next week, we'll be back for another session of these Vector Talks. And I am pleased to have you. Again, reach out to me if you want to join us, if you want to give a talk. I'll see you all later. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye.